Welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, fun tales to make you laugh and cry with some of the best storytellers from around the world, recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. This story is from Russia. It's about a witch, the scariest witch in the world. And her name is Baba Yaga. Do you know what she eats for breakfast? No, it's not golden doodles or crunchy munchies or cheery nose or chocolate starry pops. No, for breakfast every morning she eats a fat, juicy child. Crunchy munchy yum yum yum. Baba Yaga has spiky white hair and long bony fingers and when she walks her bones click like this. Clack, clickety clack, click, clack, clickety clack. Ready? Off we go. Mouth open, story jump out. Once upon a time in Russia, there was a little girl called Natasha who lived in a village next to the dark, dark woods. She lived with her mum and her dad and her baby brother. One day, her mum and dad said, Natasha, we have to go to market. We'll be away all day. Please look after your baby brother and mind you watch out for the black geese who belong to Baba Yaga the witch. They've been spotted flying around our village and they're looking out for juicy children to take back for Baba Yaga's breakfast. OK, 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 said Natasha, waving her mum and dad goodbye. But you know how it is. You really, really mean to be good. And then someone comes along who asks you to play and it's, it's just so hard to say no. Natasha was really, really good. She looked after her baby brother all morning. She looked after him for one hour. She looked after him for two hours, for three hours, for four hours. But after four hours, she thought, I am really, really bored. So, after lunch, when her friends knocked on the door, knock, knock, knockety knock. Natasha, 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 come and hold the rope for us while we skip. Natasha thought, well... Just one little eeny weeny play. Is that too much to ask? So she carefully wrapped up her baby brother. It's cold in Siberia where Natasha lives. And she took him outside and put him gently onto a blanket and went off to turn the rope. And after a while, she forgot all about him. But you won't forget, will you? When Natasha finished playing, she went to pick up her baby brother and, uh-oh, her heart sank into her boots. Her baby brother had gone. In his place was a single black feather blowing in the wind. She shouted his name. She stopped. She waited. She listened. She shouted again. But the only sound was the distant beating of wings. <laughs> Natasha knew that the black geese had swooped down and stolen her little brother and taken him to Baba Yaga for breakfast. I have to go and save him, Natasha said, and she began running towards the forest. Running, 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 running. She ran and she ran and she ran and she ran across the fields until she came to a shimmering lake. And there she saw a blue fish lying on the bank, unable to breathe. Help me, help me, help me, please, gasped the little fish. Natasha was in a big hurry to save her little brother. But she did feel sorry for the fish. So she quickly stooped down and picked it up and carefully put it back into the water. Plop! 
it darted straight down to the bottom of the lake and picked up a tiny silver shell in its mouth. You saved my life, said the fish. That makes my heart sing. Here, take this magic shell. If ever you're in danger, throw it over your shoulder. Natasha could not see how a small silver shell could help her much. But she did not want to be rude, so she put it in her pocket and forgot all about it. But you won't forget, will you? It wasn't long before she came to a line of trees, and there, at the foot of one of them, she saw a squirrel caught in a trap. Help me, help me, help me, please, called the squirrel. I'm stuck. Natasha really wanted to carry on and help her baby brother, but she felt so sorry for the little squirrel who had his tail caught in nasty metal teeth of a cruel trap. So she knelt down and gently opened the trap. The squirrel ran straight up the tree and straight back down again. Whoop, whoop. You saved my life! said the squirrel. That makes my heart sing. Here, take my golden nut and if ever you're in danger, throw it over your shoulder. Thanks, said Natasha. She put the nut in her pocket and forgot all about it. But you won't forget, will you? And she hurried on. Soon, Natasha came to a stony bank and there she saw a teeny tiny mouse trying to move a rock. Oh, 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 help me, help me, help me, please, shouted the mouse. I'm trying to get into my hole, but there's a mountain in the way. Natasha really wanted to rescue her brother from Baba Yaga, but she felt so sorry for that little mouse, so she pushed and she shoved and she pushed and she shoved until she rolled that rock away. The little mouse ran into his hole and immediately reappeared holding a tiny, shiny black pebble. You saved my life! said the little mouse, and that makes my heart sing. Take this pebble, and if ever you're in trouble, throw it over your shoulder. Oh, thank you so much, little mouse, said Natasha, who put it in her pocket and forgot all about it. But you won't forget, will you? Natasha ran on, running, running, running towards the dark forest and the trees grew closer and closer together and it got darker and darker and darker. Soon Natasha came to a clearing and there she saw Baba Yaga's hut which was standing on three giant chicken legs and moaning gently to itself like it was singing a creepy lullaby. Up on the roof were two black geese with eyes glowing like red hot coals. Very quietly, Natasha tiptoed up the steps and pushed open the door of Baba Yaga's hut. Inside, Baba Yaga was asleep in her rocking chair by the fire. And over the fire was a pot of bubbling water. And on the floor was Natasha's baby brother playing with some skulls. Very quietly, Natasha picked up her baby brother. Shh! And very quietly, she tiptoed towards the door. Shh! But just as she reached the door, her brother started to cry. The black geese woke up and started to hiss and honk and hiss and honk. And all that noise woke Baba Yaga. Stop, thief! Bring me back my breakfast! 
Natasha did not stop to answer the witch. She just started running, running, running with her little brother in her arms. And Baba Yaga came out of her hut and started chasing after them on her long, bony legs. Click, clack, clickety, clack, click, clack, clickety, clack. And as she ran, she sang in a deep, gravelly voice. Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga, hm, hm. Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga, hm, hm. Natasha could not run very fast because her brother was too heavy. She looked back and she saw that the witch was getting closer. What could she do? What could she do? Suddenly, she remembered something. Can you remember? Aha! That's right. Good listening. Yes, the silver shell from the blue fish. So she reached into a pocket and there it was, small and smooth in the palm of her hand, and she threw it over her shoulder. Ooh, ooh, blink! Instantly, a huge lake appeared behind her. Baba Yaga could not go round it. Baba Yaga could not go across it. So she kneeled down at the edge of the lake and began to drink the water through her long, bony nose. <coughs> she drank so fast that the water in the lake began to go down. Glug, 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 glug. Glug, glug. And it wasn't long before she had drunk the entire lake. And she started running again, chasing after Natasha. Click, clack, clickety, clack, click, clack, clickety, clack. And as she ran, she sang in a deep, gravelly voice. Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga, hm, hm. Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga, hm, hm. Natasha could smell Baba Yaga's hot, fishy breath over her shoulder. But what could she do? Can you think? That's right. The gift from the squirrel. That's right. Can you remember what it was? Yes, a small golden nut. She reached into a pocket and there it was. She threw the nut over her shoulder. Ooh, ooh, crash! At once, a thick grove of nut trees sprang up behind her. They grew so close together that not even a beam of light could slip between them. Baba Yaga could not get over them. Baba Yaga could not get under them. And Baba Yaga could definitely not get through that thicket of trees. Natasha kept on running. But do you think that a clump of nut trees was enough to stop a hungry witch from getting her breakfast? Why, no. Baba Yaga began to bite into the trees with her pointy, saw-shaped teeth. Crunch, munch, snap. Whee! She threw one tree over her shoulder. Crunch, munch, snap. Whee! She threw another tree over her shoulder. It wasn't long before she had eaten enough trees to squeeze between the gap and the witch ran on. Click, clack, clickety, clack, click, clack, clickety, clack. And as she ran, she sang in a deep, gravelly voice. Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga, hm, hm. Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga, hm, hm. Natasha kept running and running and running. But her baby brother was very heavy and her head hurt from all that running. She was about to sink down and surrender to the witch. When she remembered something, what was it? Yes, the shiny black pebble the mouse had given to her. She reached into a pocket. Thank goodness, there it was. She threw it over her shoulder. Ooh, ooh, oomph. A magnificent stony mountain sprang up behind her. It was so tall that its top was in the clouds. Baba Yaga could not eat it. Baba Yaga could not drink it. Baba Yaga could not get over it. Baba Yaga could not get round it. So she had to go back home, mumbling and cursing with her stomach rumbling and grumbling with no breakfast. Click, clack, 
clickety-clack, click, clack, clickety-clack. And as she ran, she sang in a deep, sad voice, Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga, hoo, hoo, Baba Yaga, Baba Yaga, hoo, hoo. As for Natasha, she carried her little brother all the way back to her house. And when her mum and dad got back from the market, she was safely at home playing with him. And do you know what? They'd brought her some prianiki, or gingerbread, for being so good. Now, tell me this. Would you stay quiet about your adventure with Baba Yaga, or would you sit down and tell your mum and dad the whole story? Well, that's for you to know and for us to guess. And that is where this story ends. Thanks for listening to Super Great Kids Stories. Remember to like, subscribe and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. If you like the stories, we'd love to hear from you. Get in touch via our website at supergreatkidsstories.com where you can also find out more about our storytellers. <laughs>